That's right. Chelsea have battered West Ham 5-0. Another London derby. Another London team dealt with. Look, forget about Arsenal. Chelsea have just gone and beat Spurs and West Ham in a row. That's what I like to see. We weren't good enough against Arsenal in the London derby. And the message has quite clearly got through to the squad that that simply isn't good enough. So we've gone back to the bridge and delivered on two occasions. West Ham, look, they weren't great today either. They have really, really fallen off it. But Chelsea look really strong. At home, in possession, out of possession. We're doing everything right at the moment. I don't know what it was, but against Everton, Pochettino literally decided to change things up. We win 6-0. Then go into Wembley against Manchester City, threw it all out the door, changed the system again, and we look pretty woeful. Then we go back to this 4-2-3-1, and all of a sudden we're winning games again. Enzo Fernandez isn't in the team, and the midfield looks good. It's running games. Kukurea in this inverted position looks really good. And the attitude problems that were there against Everton, well, they've been drummed out as well, because the players that were complacent, egotistical, I'm not seeing that at the moment. And I've got to say, we look really strong. And this push for Europe, it's back on. It really is. We saw a lot of goals today from open play, which we didn't see against Tottenham. So that's nice that we're able to do both. Because I felt like against Spurs, we probably weren't clinical enough from open play. But today, to get five goals against West Ham suggests that, yes, we were clinical enough. We took our chances well. The midfield and the way that was linking up with the attackers, is some of the best I've seen this season. I mean, there's that moment where Casado plays the ball through to Jackson, and it looks like Jackson might be offside where he's running with Zuma, but wow, that is Casado just absolutely unlocking a West Ham team. Conor Gallagher looks good because where Kukure is tucking in, Conor Gallagher is allowed to play up higher, play in a role where he doesn't have to be the most creative player because Cole Palmer's doing that, but he can add to us defensively when we're without the ball in terms of how he's pressing and obviously provide that extra bit of support going forwards. And the whole duty isn't on him as a 10 to create everything because Cole Palmer is absolutely free roaming all over the pitch, picking up the ball in all sorts of areas, causing all sorts of havoc. This is the most balanced. I think this Chelsea team has looked arguably all season and we are starting to put together a little bit of consistency going through the last few weeks. If you think about it, you know, since Everton, which I'd say this is when this system first kind of got used because we were down to the bare bones and didn't really have much left. Then against Man City, we threw it away. Then against Aston Villa, well, the second half was really strong. First half, look, don't get me wrong, it wasn't. But then in the next couple of games, bar Arsenal, we've been okay. Arsenal was embarrassing, but we are moving up the table. We're in seventh place now. Yes, Manchester United still have to play, but who knows what could happen there. I am happy and impressed with what I've seen and credit where it's due because I've been the first person to question Pochettino this season. But I will say, well done. You found something there with Kukurea in this inverted role. Um, a lot of people are speaking like they're geniuses and knew that it would work already. I don't think anyone expected that. So fair play. You've watched him in training. You've seen that. And Kukurea's understanding and how quickly he's grasped this role comes from the education of playing at La Masia as a kid. When you come through Barcelona's academy, you have an absolute understanding of football and you don't leave there without one. And Kukurea has quite evidently shown that he understands how to execute this role. And he has done that so quickly with so many positives. There are very few negatives about the role he was currently playing. And even when there was, at times, I felt like we looked slightly, slightly open on that space, in that space where he's vacating, Kukurea was able to get back in there, working hard, making sure that they didn't have a threat from Jared Bowen, really from West Ham's right-hand side. Bowen was a threat today. Look, he hit the bar three times, so you can't say that he wasn't a threat. And yes, Chelsea from set pieces is a little bit shaky and my worry was when James Ward Prowse came on that it could be uh it could be a little bit worrying for us but we literally put West Ham to bed in the second half ASAP and that's kind of something we've seen under Pochettino Reese in recent weeks the second half has been better 
that's not been a consistent this season at Chelsea, has it? How many times have we been in a good position going into the second half and thrown it all away? Well, look, we're holding on now. And I feel like some things are starting to click. And I'm look, I'm not going to sit here and say potch in, potch in, because for me, it's still not good enough. We should have had a trophy this season. We shouldn't be fighting for Conference League football. But there's something here, and he's learned, maybe, and the squad are learning, and it might have taken a whole season, which, in my opinion, is excessive, because I think better managers get their point across sooner, and better players understand it quicker. And obviously, that's not happened at Chelsea this season, but this little bit of form that we found ourselves in, the fact that we're now up to like a double-figure goal, positive goal difference, the fact that we've closed this gap, that we're really not far away from Spurs really suggests to me that yes they've been falling out of the top four but we've been picking it up and we are seventh place in the Premier League table right now until Manchester United play against Crystal Palace we're looking very strong defensively we're keeping clean sheets I mean how often this season has that been a downfall for us our defense but just recently since we saw the kind of must return of Thiago Silva and Trevor Chalobah paired together I don't think we've really looked back. Yes, there's been little interchanges, but the changing of the team isn't drastic at the moment. If Chalobah has to go and play on the right-hand side, it works. If he plays at centre-back, it works. Thiago Silva coming back in, I think has got the message across to this team how important clean sheets are. And the fact we've kept another one today is instrumental in our late, late, late push for Europe. I think it's just too little too late, in my opinion. And if we get there, fair enough. But imagine... Had we turned up against Wolves on Christmas Eve, you know? Had we turned up against Brentford? Had we turned up against Sheffield United? Had we turned up against Burnley? All of a sudden, we're in this conversation for top four. We're, in, we're challenging for fifth and above. So it's really frustrating that, that we've kind of let that slip because, as look, as embarrassing it was losing to Arsenal, I can kind of take that because they are miles ahead of us this season. I can't take it in the manner that it happened, but I can understand that we probably wouldn't win that game away from home at the Emirates whilst they're chasing a title down. Their first one in a long, long time. I think 20 years. So I can understand that. That that would be a tough game. And But the manner we did it in and lost there wasn't acceptable. But actually, what we're doing away from that game and away from the, sh the finals and the semi-final that haven't been good enough, oh, look, we, we arguably should have had a trophy this season. But... We haven't, but I'm seeing a bit of consistency right now. And I'm seeing a team gelling because they're being allowed to be consistent. There's not a lot of meddling coming from Pochettino right now. There's not loads of dramatic changes week in, week out. There's smart and concise changes that are affecting how the game plays out. Look, there's no doubt about it. Today, if Alfie had started on the right-hand side, Suchek would have gone and pushed up from midfield, pinned him, made it difficult for him. West Ham would have isolated him in that game as a player where they feel they can dominate physically but no look as soon as you put Trevor Chalaber there they're not allowed they can't do that there's no point Suchek even vacating his area because we've seen him do that in the past not necessarily against Chelsea teams but against other teams so that was a really smart move there and it didn't throw the balance of the team too much and yes at times we were a little bit slow in build up but the way we played out from those moments where we were slow was to almost perfection. There is the goal that Cole Palmer scores. Around me in the Matthew Harden, there were chants for come on. It was almost booing that we were taking too long on the ball. And then slowly but surely we moved the ball up the pitch and then Casado came alive and absolutely made something happen in the middle of the pitch with Jackson. And then again... And then obviously played Madaweki in. And all of a sudden, we were on the score sheet. And we looked really, really good. Yes, I know people question that. But you have to have a little bit of patience in terms of how we're looking to play. It's not always about going forwards as quick as you can. As Tottenham fans have found out, as other teams have found out, that doesn't always work. But like I said, I think the players are fighting for each other. They're fighting for a cause that they all believe in maybe even believe is possible. They are connected as one as a team because you can see they're not arguing with each other. I think I think 
the Everton game signified something to me. I think, and and I think the defeat against Manchester City in that semi final and the reactions that we saw from some of those players, I think that's been addressed because I haven't seen it since. And I have to commend Noni Madueki because. I am seeing a player that wants the best for everyone right now as well as himself. And after he'd got his goal today, look, he didn't have to lay that pass off to Jackson, and he did. I saw the shift that he put in against Spurs. And there is no question about it for me that we are looking at a player that is far more effective in a game of football than his opposite winger counterpart in Mikalo Madrid. And I just want to touch on him because right now in this team, he is without doubt probably the most ineffective player that we have. I'm I'm not seeing enough from him. There are times when defensively, especially with this new Kukurea role, he doesn't look interested in tracking back when actually he probably should be more so than ever. Um, he's got the pace to move up the field quickly if he needs to. I don't really see it. I think he's woeful. His, his chances are very often wasted. He lacks complete composure in front of goal. I'm not sure what he needs. Maybe he needs a loan. Maybe he needs time. If anything, what this is suggesting to me is maybe I have been a little bit too quick to judge at times with this Chelsea team. But I, I do have standards that I think need to be maintained. And I think right now, I can say off the back of a couple of games, this is the first time in the season that I'm being given evidence from this squad and this manager that we are moving in the right direction. Now, there's a long way to go, and if Europe doesn't happen and the next three games are questionable, then we can discuss it more. But right now, I can say that I am being provided evidence to suggest that we're moving in the right direction. So let's see what happens. When all these players start coming back from injury, let's not mess with the balance here. We've got a formula that's working, and it doesn't matter who the names are or what they cost. If we're winning football matches in the style that we did today against teams in and around us, then you've got a formula that you need to stick to. And I think Poch has been guilty of not doing that at times this season. So let's see. I'm I'm over the moon with this. The fact that the table looks positive from a Chelsea point of view is an absolute rarity this season. And I am definitely not taking it for granted. Two massive away games in Forest and Brighton. And hopefully we can go into the final game at home. I think it's against Bournemouth, hoping that something could happen regarding Europe. Wouldn't that be quite spectacular if Chelsea managed to pull that off? Um, being in seventh place almost feels like a miracle with the amount of knockbacks, knockbacks we've had this season. But it also shows that actually at least those points have shown some value in keeping us in and around. Where, where we should have been, but my gosh, I wish they were wins. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. An absolute rout from Chelsea against West Ham. One thing I will touch base on is, I did say Kudos would be a player to watch for West Ham United in my preview. I also said Casado. I think I pretty much got that bang on. I think they were both exceptional today. Mohamed Kudos won't be at West Ham next season. He is far too good. That is an exceptional player. Um, I thought Paqueta was okay. Kudos was the standout player for me today for West Ham United. What a talent, what a player, an electric player. And my gosh, there's a space for him in Chelsea's team where Mikalo Mudrik is currently occupying. So let me know your thoughts. Subscribe if you're new. We're on the road to 2,500 subscribers. We are about 50 to 70 subscribers away, something like that. And make sure to like the video. If we can get around 20 likes again, that would be fantastic because the support on recent videos has been exceptional. I will catch you in the build-up to our next game. Fingers crossed, Crystal Palace pulls something out of the bag for us. I'll speak to you soon.